a majority of the ship, which a day ago we had been so excited to get these care packs, now we were all just in a, in a state of depression because we were all throwing these things away. And I thought that there has to be something online. There has to be a website that can help someone like my mom to send a care package. Welcome to Crazy Good Turns, a podcast that recognizes and celebrates people who do great things for others. I'm your host, Frank Blake, and I'm really excited today to have as our guest, Chelsea Mandela. Chelsea is the chief executive officer and founder of Troopster Military Care Packs. It's a great organization that's dedicated to sending quality deployment packages to servicemen and women overseas. You know, I get asked from time to time um, how the people that appear on the podcast, how do we choose those folks? And sometimes it's obvious in terms of, you know, they're very famous people or in terms of what they've done. In Chelsea's case, Chelsea sent me a blind note on LinkedIn. I get lots of those. I try to respond to all of them. And nine times out of 10, or maybe even more than nine times out of 10, um, that's all it is, just a back and forth response and it stops there. But in my interactions with Chelsea and listening to her and how she thinks about her charity and what she's doing, I was so impressed that not only did I contribute to uh, Troopster, but I also thought I need to get Chelsea on this show so that you all can hear from her. Just an outstanding person uh, who I think is uh, devoting herself to doing great things for others. First, welcome. Thank you. I'm going to start by thanking you for your service to the country in the Navy, correct? Mm -hmm. So I have a point of view that service to our country in the military is its own crazy good turn. And I heard you uh, tell a story, I think it was actually on YouTube, about uh, an event on a ship that just characterizes the selflessness and heroism of our service members. And maybe you'd share that story just as a starter before we get into Troopster. That was a very interesting moment that happened because it really demonstrated the test that these individuals go through um, whenever they're deployed, that anything can happen. This jet was about to take off. It was on board the USS Kearsarge, uh, which is a littoral amphibious ship. And the jet's about to take off when all of a sudden it catches fire. And the pilot immediately has to eject. But the big thing is that there was ammunition. There was a bomb on board that, <laughs> on board that jet. Um, without hesitation, all of the sailors, in recognizing that there's a fire, they immediately jump into action. They go, they get the hoses, they get the things that they need to do, and they immediately respond. There was no consideration of getting away from the fire. They all promptly jumped straight into action. And that moment was captured on tape. Um, we recorded it. Uh, the MCs, the photojournalists who were there, documented that. But what was amazing was that they did everything that they were supposed to do correctly. I mean, within 20 seconds, they already had the fire extinguished, they had the bomb removed, they had the pilot out safe distance from it, and it was just uh, amazing reaction time. To me, the impressive part of that story is not only the training element, but that what they are doing is running to danger. Mm -hmm. And where every instinct is probably, I, I want to be as far away from that fire as possible, you actually are running towards the mm -hmm. fire. And one of my, I, this is a side note, but one of my favorite commercials from Home Depot was, uh, so Home Depot uh, prides itself on responding to natural emergencies. And we had a commercial that showed a Home Depot truck and it comes to a fork in the road and down one direction of the road is bright sunshine and down another direction of the road is horrible weather and uh, dark clouds and the truck turns to the dark clouds. Your story of those folks uh, rescuing that plane is exactly that story. It's people doing good for others and not thinking of themselves but being um, 
mindful of what their job is and what their job is to help others. So thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. What got you into the Navy and how long did you serve and where did you serve? I joined the Navy back in 2011, right out of college. I had just graduated with my degree in advertising and I decided that before I uh, went into a corporate position and did that for the rest of my life, uh, that I wanted to see the world. Uh, I'm from a military family, so I, I grew up hearing all of these great sea stories, and I kind of wanted those for myself. So I joined the Navy as a, a photojournalist, as a Navy photographer. And um, <laughs> right off the bat, uh, it was an amazing experience. I went to work for Navy Public Affairs. We are the um, eyes and ears for the military. So not just the Navy branch, but we go out all around the world with the different branches, and we document things that are happening around the world. Every deployment, I was going to Malaysia, or I How was going to How many different the field. deployments uh, did you do? So I was actually on 13 different deployments. Wow. Yes. <laughs> I, uh, I was on nine different ships, um, sometimes even foreign ships. So I, I worked across not just the United States Navy, but also um, different ally ships. When you're on all your deployments, I assume that one of the things that happened was you were waiting to hear from the outside world and that that's one of the things that prompted troops to. Yes, uh, I was on my seventh ship. We were in the Mediterranean for anti-piracy operations. So the area that we were deployed in was uh, unsafe territory. We were capturing pirates. When, whenever you're in the middle of something like that, life is far more challenging. You can't communicate with home. You don't receive mails often. And so by the time you do receive something like a care package or a letter, it is just Christmas at sea. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it means so much to you. We had been out there for um, about eight months, and we hadn't heard anything from home. We hadn't been able to communicate back because of the job that we were doing, the nature of the mission. And we got word that we were finally receiving mail. And so this was just a jubilation on the ship. And you have to imagine 3,000 sailors and Marines who are just excited to finally get mail. And I remember uh, it's, it's an all-hands movement. You have these giant helos who are bringing over just pallets and pallets and pallets of mail that has been collected and stored over the past four or five months. And so we're all down there just getting and receiving these packages. And I remember I got this big box from my mom. Now, my mom is from rural Kentucky. So I know that it takes her an hour to get anywhere if she's going to shop for, for stuff or even to take a care pack to a post office. And I was so excited to get this box, <laughs> that I, I rushed it upstairs, I <laughs> tore it open. I don't even think I used scissors. I just <laughs> went through it. Um, but I immediately was heartbroken because everything in it had gone bad. Oh, no. Yeah, chocolates had melted and just everything crushed, broken. And this was kind of my heartbreak in a box because it felt as though after all of the stress that we were going through, the things that we were doing, just constant work and pressure, and then there was this. And um, something that I realized was that I was not the only person that this was happening to. A majority of the ship, which a day ago we had been so excited to get these care packs, now we were all just in a, in a state of depression because we were all throwing these things away. And I thought that there has to be a better way to do it. There, there has to be something online with, with Google and Amazon, there has to be a website that can help someone like my mom to send a care package. And I was surprised that in 2013, there wasn't anything available. How difficult is it to send a care package? It's very challenging because you, you have to use the postal service, which you have to fill out very specific customs forms. Um, if you don't fill out the customs forms appropriately, then it'll get sent around the fleet and not actually get to your, your service member. Um, it can also be expensive if you're sending bigger boxes. So it's just, it's a very difficult to even get it overseas. So did you decide then and there, I'm, I'm going to do something to fix this, or did it sort of 
stick in the back of your head for a while before you before you decided to take it on? Uh, actually, that day, I was immediately impassioned to to just try and find a solution. So I had stayed up trying to first find something online. And then when I couldn't find anything, that next week, uh, I used to have this old sketchbook. And so I just started sketching out what would what would this imaginary company look like? What What would it do? How could we do this and make it better? And I just started toying around first with the idea of how could this company come to fruition. At that time, I had no business experience. I had not paid attention to my business <laughs> classes when I was in my undergrad. <laughs> um, I, I never thought that I would start a company. So it was just something where I, I started during lunch breaks uh, reading papers from the Small Business Administration or How To For Dummies books. <laughs> and um, and then over the course of two years, I slowly put this this company together that turned out to be Troopster. And when did when did you actually start it? When in effect did the virtual doors open? So it's actually it's kind of funny, but I I actually launched it Thanksgiving Day in 2015 because I had used all of my military leave to take boots to business classes wow. and yeah and to take all of these classes to learn how to start a business uh, so I didn't have any leave left to go home for Thanksgiving and I remember I was on the phone with my mom um, and I, I told her I, I have everything it's ready but it's not perfect and I'm really afraid to launch and she said you know nothing will ever be perfect and if you wait for that moment it'll never happen so you might as well just go on ahead and launch now and I and that's what I did. And so now during this process, were there people encouraging you and saying, yeah, Chelsea, this is a great idea? Or were most people saying, what are you doing? You know, take your leave. Don't don't be so obsessed with this. Yeah, um, I, I had a bit of both, actually. Um, you, you always are going to have those naysayers um, who say, well, you have no business experience. You have no formal background, um, so you should really just avoid this. And then you have others who say, wow, that's a really great idea. And if you believe in it, if you work hard enough, you can do it. So it's just how much do you believe in yourself and in the idea. So you start it Thanksgiving Day of... 2015. 2015. So we're now almost six years later, not quite. How has it gone? How many packages have you sent? What's What are your big learnings from this? Oh my gosh, I have learned so much. I launched out of my house while I was still serving in the military. When I launched, I still had three years left on my Navy contract, which is what I wanted. I, I wanted to have a Paycheck coming in while I started this startup. <laughs> and at first, it was just something where I was running it out of my living room. I was running to Sam's Club, you know, box stores so that I could get products. Um, and I would stand a 24-hour watch, come home exhausted, and pack care packages. And these orders came in virtually, or people would, I mean, how were you getting the orders to do? Uh, yeah, so I, I had looked up uh, e-commerce platforms, um, and so I was receiving orders um, online, uh, but I was also getting emails from service members, from military families, sometimes calls <laughs> to place orders. Um, and I was also talking to my customer base to make things better. So at first, uh, instead of the pre-made kits that you have now, um, at first I had just three, a wall of 300 products. <laughs> and you could just pick a bunch of products and I would make the care pack for you. And I learned that I, I was having a lot of traffic, but not a lot of orders. So I started reaching out to the people who did place orders and... I started brainstorming with one of the military spouses who said, you know what would be really great is if you just had pre-made kits, uh, because right now it's really daunting to go on your site. And just getting feedback such as that, not being afraid to, to reach out to the customers and asking them how I can be better, how Troopster could be better, um, really, really helped the site. And so out of curiosity, what did most service members want to receive? What are the things that when you open that package, you say, wow, this is great? It's funny, but there is there is kind of a top five favorites list. Um, so beef jerky is one of them. 
Uh, coffee is another, any, any, any kind of coffee they're happy with. Usually sweets, so if you can get Skittles, snacks, things like that. Hygiene products, so depending on where you are in the world, you might not have access to water. So baby wipes are very important. And then hot sauce. And what are the things that somebody uh, that you might think folks want, but actually eh, not so much? Oddly enough, things like baked goods. It doesn't travel well. By the time we get it, it's just not great. Also, anything large. Um, so sometimes we'll get things uh, like magazines or we'll get something like a big ball or th things like that. And we don't have a lot of storage capacity. So when you're deployed, no matter what your situation is, you are given very limited space to store things. And so you have to kind of consider that. So if you're sending things that we really can't use or, you know, like picture frames or random things like that, we can't use it. So we end up having to give it away or throw it away. So now you're in your living room packing these individual packs. And at what point? Does it become obvious that, hey, this is actually working, I, and I can't do it from my living room? I remember getting this letter from the captain of the USS Eisenhower, which is a very large carrier ship for the U.S. Navy. And they had 3,000 service members, and someone had found my website, and they had read my story, uh, and they wanted to know if I could send them care packages. And I remember looking at this letter thinking, oh my gosh, how am I going to send 3,000 care packages? <laughs> and at the time, that was so daunting to me. So I, I reached out to, to community leaders, to other businesses, and within, I want to say it was six weeks, we put together our first pack event, um, and we got care packages out to those troops. So what's a pack event? Ah, uh, yes. We, we have different variations of care packages. We have the personalized packs where a mom or a dad who has someone deployed can order a personalized care package that our warehouse does all of the running around packing and shipping for. So those are personalized packs. It's kind of like the Amazon of care packs. But then we also work with different communities around the nation, uh, different businesses for volunteer events, and we will hold a pack party where we'll bring a thousand care packages with us. We bring all of the contents, and we will pack care packages with the community. With oh, what the a terrific! <laughs> what a terrific event! What mm -hmm. a great way to show support for our service members. And it's fun. It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Kids can come. They decorate the boxes. One event, um, we worked with a bunch of lawyers in San Diego, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they made it very competitive. They started racing <laughs> <laughs> to see who could pack the most. <laughs> That's terrific. And so is this, so it, you get communities doing this, you get companies doing this. Mm -hmm, both. Uh, both. And is most of the product donated, or do you buy that? How does that work? So uh, we work we work both with in kind product donors. Um, so we've actually worked with Colgate Palmolive, Kind, Black Rifle Coffee, uh, Axe Razors, um, and so they will donate you know up to six thousand to ten thousand products to us for these community events. Um, but then we also work with distributors to purchase wholesale products if we don't have those products for in kind. And how many packages have you now sent out, if you go back over the last six years almost? We have sent uh, more than 26,000 care packages, which considering uh, the, the first year, a couple of hundred was right. intimidating to me, and now we can hold a pack event that does 10,000 at a time. And do you actually have your own warehouse and things like that now? We do. Yeah. We do. So considering it went from my living room to the spare bedroom, to the garage, to this very shady little business, uh, to now a warehouse, it's amazing. If you were giving advice to yourself now and you're back in 2015 or 16, what would that advice be? That advice would be don't be so in love with your own idea that you aren't willing to pivot. Interesting. So explain that. Um, so at first, I was gung-ho that the way the site was, that everything I had on there was absolutely perfect, and any advice that I received was just take it with a grain of salt. It, it doesn't need to change. And 
Um, I think that a lot of entrepreneurs and startup businesses are kind of in that mindset where they've already worked so hard to launch something that now they don't want to pivot or change. And I've learned over time that you really have to have um, a what we call in the military Semper Gumby, which is being very flexible, <laughs> always be flexible. Um, and so you you don't want to ever pigeonhole your business or your idea because you aren't willing to take advice and, and make a change. And if you were giving advice to others who, you know, somebody else who's listening now who says, boy, I've got a passion for this, but it just just does seem so challenging to get something started, what would your advice be? My advice would be to use your resources, and by that I mean using your community uh, to find mentors and networking. Something else that I, I didn't realize early on was that there is always a community of small business owners, large business owners who are willing to help you, to, to mentor and guide, and at first you're you're willing, you just want to do it by yourself. You don't want to ask silly questions when really there, there is no silly question. So use, find mentors, use that, gu that guidance. Um, you're not alone. Do you ever get uh, wonderful letters or comments from either service members or families that just say, oh, thank you so much for what you're doing? Yes, we do all the time, and I love them so, so give, much. <laughs> what are a couple of examples? <laughs> Um, we, I, we just received a letter the other day from a unit of 60 individuals uh, who were in Kabul. And they, they sent a note um, just thanking us for the products that we had sent uh, <laughs> and, and how big of a difference it had made, especially for the service members who didn't have family. Is your, in effect, customer typically the instance where there isn't a family that's sending a care package or is it more the family who has a service member but is, is a little bit intimidated as you say by the process uh you know so we we've recently over the past couple of months have been taking surveys of everyone who comes through and uses the site and something that i was really surprised about uh is that actually the biggest portion of our customers are uh, service members sending to themselves. Oh, interesting. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was really surprised. <laughs> um, so these are, these are individuals who don't want to necessarily bother their families or who might not have families. And so they go to our site because they know that we can send to the military. We can get packs delivered to them. And so that is actually and our largest customer And was setting that up base. difficult? The, you know, just the being able to execute? It was. Uh, that, that was another thing where, you know, over time we've had to work, um, create partnerships with the U.S. Postal Service. We've created partnerships for bulk shipping so that we can get prices down. Actually, now anyone who uses the Troopster site does not pay for shipping to send a care package overseas. We've really gone through a lot of obstacles and hurdles to make it what it is today. It is one of the interesting things for me, again, was just such a high regard for the people who do join the military and serve their country. And you think that everything the country would do to make that experience feel is the most appreciated thing you could do. And yet, so often, just as you described, things like sending, I mean, the basics, like s communicating, sending packages, we seem to make extraordinarily difficult. I assume the need is there whether you're deployed overseas or you can feel as lonely in, you know, in a base in Georgia or North Carolina absolutely. as you do overseas. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, and kind of an interesting statistic is that 45% uh, of the military is 25 years or younger. And a lot of times it's their first deployment or they're away from home. And so even if you are at a base in Georgia, this could you could be 18 year old, years old. This is your first time away from your friends, your family, everything you've ever known. And so it, it can impact morale. So five years from now, what are you doing and what is Troopster doing? <laughs> so my vision is for Troopster to be the household name for military care packages. And we are working to develop various partnerships around the nation so that we can grow our impact. And are there other need states that you see that you'd be addressing in addition to care packages? Or is it best to keep focused on that? 
Um, right now, I really want to perfect our, our operating model, so sticking to the care packages for the military. But as we are growing, we're also seeing there are, there are DOD individuals who aren't necessarily active duty who also deploy overseas. Um, there are a lot of um, students who study abroad, and there actually aren't care package programs to get. Oh, interesting. Right, yeah, for study abroad students. So there are other avenues. Who has done a crazy good turn for you in your life? <laughs> um, well, actually, I would say that you're certainly one of them. I did not expect when I sent the cold message <laughs> to, to hear back, but... Um, well, I feel as though I have to say my mom, actually. She has always been an individual who comes through um, and who has always been very motivating for me. When I first launched Troopster, and I, I told you the story, um, but she sent, a, she sent me a card with a frame that said, um, no matter what happens or if Troopster succeeds, I'm immensely proud of you, and this is a day you'll remember forever. Anybody else in your work, during your time in service, somebody who just did something, and you say, boy, that was, in that was a, an amazing thing to have done for me. Um, yes, there was a Master Sergeant Parisi um, who was in the Marine Corps with me, and we served on one of my last deployments together. Uh, after I had started Troopster, um, he had given me a challenge coin, um, and he had given me advice that um, in life, no matter the challenges, so long as we try our best and always know what our true north is, that, that that's what you should follow. And I know that it seems very, very minute. I mean, this wasn't someone who, who made great connections for me or uh, who made this massive contribution to Troopster, but what they did do was he helped me to know that someone was in my corner. And just in having that, it made all the difference in the world. Yeah, I know. I think those are the crazy good turns that people do that they're not even aware of, but that are hugely impactful. Mm -hmm. And a person may not even know what he did for you. One of the things I've learned doing this podcast is just the importance of saying thank you to people and how often people are doing amazing things for others and they never get a thank you. Mm -hmm. So if people want to learn more, about you, about Troopster, where do they where do they go? So they can visit our site at troopster.org. And Troopster, since I know that can be tough to spell, is T R O O P is in Paul, S is in Sam, T E R dot com or dot org. And about yourself, the same place, go to the same place. Absolutely. Yep. You can find my story. Um, you can see the impact that we've done. We try to post anything that we're doing in the communities. Um, you can also follow us on social media. So we are all over the place. All right. Terrific. Uh, Chelsea, this has been just, this has been terrific. And congratulations to you. I think I've said this to you before, but... One of the things in doing this podcast is I get the chance to talk to lots of people who have uh, great charitable impulses. But the other thing that I would add that you have in addition to the charitable impulse is that you put in the work and the effort, your description of spending all your uh, leave time learning about business and how you set things up. Uh, it's that combination of the charitable impulse with... I've got to do this right. I'm going to figure out how to do it. That's uh, really impressive. And I think this will be a great success. Troops, Troopster will be a great success. I encourage all of our listeners to go check out the site. And it feels like it's always appropriate to say thank you to a service member. 
And I don't know if there's a way, either, does your site have a way for people who just have no relationship to anybody uh, go on and say, I want to say thank you to some service member, I'm going to send a package. Is that possible too, or do I have to know who the package is going to? Nope, that is absolutely possible. Um, whenever you go to our site, you can send a donation care package. We have a very, very long list of troops that don't have that family support network. So you can choose to support one service member, you can choose to support an entire squadron, and we will get those care packs out for you. Well, I think that's terrific because, as I say, I think that one of the things we can all do is uh, just that habit of saying thank you. And the people who really deserve a thank you are the folks in lonely outposts, both in this country and all over the world, who are protecting us. So thank you, Chelsea. Thank you for your service. Thank you for what you're doing with Troopster. And thank you for uh, joining us on Crazy Good Turns. Thank you for having me. As always, I want to thank the team at Pen Name, Jordan Bornstein and Megan Hanlon for producing the show, as well as Stephen Key and Scoroscore. And thank you all very much for listening.